what is up everyone i'm pretty sure you know if you're into youtube and stuff and doing this you know kind of as a hobby there's tripods that you've been looking at and tripods that have some issues and you know this that and the other and uh i just wanted to go over a few things that i've seen in tripods and that i think you should uh consider before your purchase so let's get into this review and see what you should pick out and maybe what fits your needs the best at the price point that you want to pay first thing you know that comes to mind when purchasing a tripod is you got to determine what you're going to do with it okay so of course length is a, the ultimate consideration and then how compact you want it okay so these things come in a variety of sizes uh, this one happens to be a four tier setup which is actually five extensions one two three four and then your fifth one would be here um, but it actually extends down with four knuckles here that come out and then you have stuff like this that is like semi extendable with you know your three uh, leg sections but two actually extend out and then you got something like this that's a fixed setup okay um, so let me go over the length aspect uh, typically when when I'm holding a tripod I like something that's real stout robust and compact okay so I went and purchased something like this first of all um, this one is the you know your Fiesel it's an expensive brand high quality um, it did not come with this ball head these have to be purchased separately okay uh, you could get it with one um, but I like to purchase this separately because I like to be able to make this as compact as I want it, not what the manufacturer decides. One thing I noticed right off the bat when purchasing this is the fact that this was supposed to be a handheld style setup. But this base is so wide. This one's the TT15 to be exact if you're interested. Uh, but the base is so wide that I couldn't get a nice grip around it. Yeah, I could put my fingers in there. It feels okay. But it's not even it tapers down so my hands tend to slide off uh, over time especially if you have smaller hands you might want to do something like in this manner okay and then i got a small ball head the thing that sucks about uh, the ball heads is you can never get them level uh, that's where this one comes in we'll talk about that a little bit later and then all that stuff okay but my biggest thing with this tripod was something compact and, you know, easily to easily able to handle. Um, also, keeping it small and compact allows you to, you know, use it underneath the car. Uh, one thing is I didn't want the aluminum setup because I knew the aluminum had flex to it. Um, I knew I was going to be banging this stuff around and then also getting it greasy. So I didn't want anything that was plastic, such as, you know, the knuckles up here because oils and stuff will eventually um, crack it or dissolve it and break it, okay? Uh, the nice thing about this one here, let me move these to the side, is you could extend it to whatever position you want it, you know, like so, and it allows you to cant. Everything's real tight and stainless. Uh, you could tighten them all up as you feel fit, but overall it's a real robust setup. Okay, but like I said, the thing is, I didn't like the way I felt in the hands. Okay, so that's that tripod, a little bit of why I purchased it. Okay, so then I moved to something like this. Okay, the Leo Photo um, tripod. This tripod is an amazing tripod. So this one comes in around that $80 range. This one's gonna come in around that $100 range, okay? Well worth the extra price though, no doubt about it. Like I said, I don't like the aluminum stuff because it has flex. So that's when this one came in. Uh, this came with the bag and everything. Um, if you wanna see a product review, I, I could do that later on. This is more so of kind of just helping you decide why I picked the item I did um, or the items I did, okay? Uh, I put this, you know, panoramic uh, style head on it. 
So basically what that allows you to do is loosen this up and rotate from left to right because I did not like the ball style head, okay? Lock into place. You have your plate here for quick disconnects. You have your 3 8 mount option, okay? I have it mounted to a GoPro quick release because that's what I like. I like using the GoPro because it's compact. This one here, you got to pull out on these tabs, whereas this, you know, spring load it. This one, you got to pull out a latch. Once you find the area you want it in, you cam it down, you push down on it, cam it down, and it locks itself. So it becomes automatic at that point. So everything's fully adjustable. Okay. So you get some extension. I'd say about maybe a foot of an extension from there to there, okay? But remember when this is at an angle, you don't get the full height of it. But that was real nice. The one thing I liked about this is when it's fully collapsed, it's perfect to grip compared to this one, okay? They do make small ones like this that ha don't have this wide base. I don't know why they made this so wide. They should have fixed that. Um, and it's nice to grip in the hands, okay? The overall width is probably equivalent to the top of this, but since it doesn't taper, my hands don't slip down. Uh, the rubber grips or the rubber tips actually help me from actually sliding off the tripod, but this is just nice to carry around. Um, it's all carbon fiber, as you can see, and aluminum. You do have an option to mount a sidearm, you know, to uh, mount a screen here. You do have your quarter 20 base right there. Uh, all brass bushings. It's it's just a real nice overall build uh, for the price point. You know, typically you'll get one of these for around 120 to 150 dollar range, but this one cost me around 100 bucks. Okay, always look for deals. When you decide you want to space this out, you could do so. Okay, and make it however you want the fit and finish of this thing is nice so when it's fully up even though this is straight up as you can see they mitered off those edges so that way it allows it to sit flat nicely okay it doesn't like protrude or bind this and then if I were to just press down on it right when I move to the next one it just automatically locks it in place Okay, same thing here. So when it's up and you max it out, it automatically triggers that to drop down so everything falls into place. So that's this tripod. Uh, really nice brand, really well built. I do recommend this one. The only issue with this is it was heavy and, well, it is heavy <laughs> and it's short. It's still short, uh, but I like this one over this, okay? Then I got this tripod. This is the VO Vanguard VO uh, to go tripod series. This is the second gen. They have a third gen out. Uh, the reason why I got this one in particular is the price point it came in at was phenomenal. I only paid like $30 or whatever for this used, but I mean, it's really in nice condition. It's almost brand new. Um, but the quality behind it you know, all carbon fiber. I recommend carbon fiber for sure. The quality behind it's pretty cool. Most of your knobs are round. This brand here, they have little like wings sticking out. So that way you can apply leverage to it and really get it to loosen up and tighten. Um, you have your panoramic uh, rotation here, okay? You have this big old wing here to really hunker down on this ball head, okay? It's really smooth as far as like the rotation of this. You have a plastic bushing in there. But like I said, this is hard to get leveled. That's why you have a leveler, okay? I figured this one, at least all I gotta do is lock it in place. So once I get it into the place I want it, all I need is the panoramic side of it. The GoPro could tilt, so that was no issue. 
but this came with the tripod so it wasn't like I was purchasing it also a thing to consider is what size thread you want you want the quarter 20 or the 3 8 uh, ball setup I prefer the quarter inch because I can mount a, a camera directly into this like so but the nice thing about this is it comes with the insert so you don't have to choose you just unscrew this insert Okay, and you can flip it around and then thread it in because as you can see it's staged which is really awesome okay and then you have another screw here that's a set screw so you have an option to run an Allen in there of course these all came with a traveling case uh, or this one did and not that one um, you have a dog point here that when something like this is attached what you could do is you uns you screw it upward from the base to lock it in place so it, nothing comes undone. Really important when you're turning things, you know, to m maneuver it and pivot it, especially if you have a rail system and all that. Uh, but this one allows me to get height. I was using something like this with a selfie stick attached to it and did like a uh, monopod setup. But it's just nice to have everything in one. A tripod that's solid, okay? You have full extended legs, okay? Uh, a lot of cheaper tripods, um, well, even the good ones, you don't want to extend all the way out with this mechanism type, okay? I recommend you extending it out and then sliding it in a little bit because what that does is that little bit allows it to recess in here which allows the bushing to get full strength on each leg so you have no flex, especially when you get out to the smaller limb here, okay? It allows it to not flex as much, um, but I haven't seen that issue with this Vanguard, okay? But I have had uh, a little bit expensive tripods that were like this that did flex. You get your weight set up here so if you are worried about you know you have a slider and you're worried about it falling off you could put some weight here so that way it doesn't cam forward you got a nice grip and you got these quick adjustments so the cool thing about these are they're spring loaded you adjust them all the way up and then they click okay you got extension tubes here that extend up and then you got a o-ring here that if you did have weight on it and it slammed you wouldn't crack anything you wouldn't even crack you know your bushing in there so it's like a catch okay um, you do have the option to reverse this too and run the legs this way and then run your tripod upside down it's a little bit big for this area like I said this is not a product review it's just to help you out so you could run it upside down as so and then hang something hang your camera from the bottom and reverse it what's my take on all this uh, do i recommend any of these of course i recommend all these brands that's why i still have them um, my thing that i recommend that you should take away from this is figure out what you're going to use it for figure out the size you want figure out the weight the sturdiness and try to get the cheapest price buy used don't have to buy new um, you know and get good deals and then uh, when you see another piece of kit buy the next piece of kit so that way it's like you spend less you get more kit and then you could also upgrade and sell the old stuff do not buy cheap you buy cheap you buy twice that's what I've learned and uh, I, I do not recommend that okay so buy not expensive but you know buy smart so that's going to complete today's video. I just wanted to touch base on uh, my tripod setup and what to look for and why I purchased these uh, tripods you see here. So if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated. If you want to see content like this and other content, I'll be posting um, especially a review on each one of these in detail. Uh, definitely consider subscribing and um, giving it a thumbs up and leave a comment below if you want to see uh, one in particular. And uh, until next time, I'll see y'all in the next one.